Hi, my name is Kwekwe, I'm a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing five possible reasons why your blood pressure medications may not be working. This is a phenomenon referred to as resistant hypertension, which is loosely defined as, you know, not reaching your blood pressure goals despite taking three or more medications in different classes, usually one of which is a water pill or a diuretic, and you're taking them at optimal doses, but it's still not doing the work of bringing out your blood pressure to the desired goal. Now, the first reason is the presence of an underlying medical condition. In other words, there is a medical condition separate from your hypertension that is actually contributing or that is actually causing your blood pressure to stay elevated. We have things like thyroid problems, sleep apnea, adrenal tumors, and kidney disease. Now, you will think that this is something that every doctor will check right from the word go, but unfortunately, this is not the case. You know, there was one article that, that I was reading, which was published in the Washington Post, and I'm going to put a link to that article in the description. I think it's very eye-opening, and I, I would recommend that you read that article. But in that article, what happened was that there was this gentleman who had consistently elevated high, I mean, blood pressure, and anytime he would go to his doctor, they would either increase his dose, he would go to a different doctor, they would change his medication, and this went on and on and on for some time. For several years, actually, until it got to a point where he had to go see a specialist, an endocrinologist. And this doctor did some tests and realized that this gentleman had what is called primary aldosteronism. Now, primary aldosteronism is a situation where the body produces too much of a chemical called aldosterone. Aldosterone causes the body to retain sodium. Once you retain sodium, your blood volume increases. It also causes vasoconstriction. There's constriction of the blood vessels. So he was in a perpetual state of elevated blood pressure. Thankfully, they were able to figure it out in the long run, but it had gone on for so long that he had actually developed kidney disease. So what I'm saying here is that yes, doctors, thank God for them, they do all the things that they're supposed to do. But sometimes we as patients or you as a patient need to ask the correct questions. You need to be probing your doctor more and not just accepting you know, every increase in dosage that the doctor gives you. It sometimes is very prudent to politely ask the reasons or the rationale behind certain decisions that our doctors are taking. Number two is other medications that you take concurrently with your blood pressure medications. Now, other medications that you take concurrently may affect your blood pressure in two ways. Number one, it may render the, your blood pressure medications ineffective or the other medications themselves may be raising your blood pressure. For example, we have medications like NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which includes things like naproxen, ibuprofen, aspirin, which are typically taken for pain and inflammation. Well, it turns out that these NSAIDs can actually cause your body to retain sodium. And like I explained earlier, once you retain sodium, you retain more fluid. Once you retain more fluid, you, it ends up you know, leading to high blood pressure. Or sometimes some of these NSAIDs may actually affect your kidney function and increases your risks for stroke and other cardiovascular incidents. Another classic example of medications that can affect your blood pressure are decongestants. Decongestants typically are made up of either pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine and they may be found in cough and cold products like Dayquil. Now what happens is that these decongestants are also very notorious for raising your blood pressure. For some people, they may cause an increase in the heart rate and an increase in the heart rate may also eventually lead to elevated blood pressures. Some people also take weight loss medications that can think of things like fentamine. Fentamine is a stimulant. Similarly, it would increase your heart rate and it would cause your blood pressure to stay elevated. So the thing here that I'll say is that, you know, let your doctor know every other medication that you're taking when you're going for that appointment so that they will be able to, you know, take good decisions and, and be able to drill down and see why your blood pressure is not going down. I also strongly recommend that you read all labels when you're buying over-the-counter products. You know, make sure if you suffer from high blood pressure that these medications do not contain any decongestants. And even better still, you know, be friends with your pharmacist as you're buying these over-the-counter medications. Just stroll to the pharmacy counter, ask the pharmacist, hey, I have high blood pressure, I take this medication. Is it okay if I do this? I know people have utilized my services in that way so many times. And the good thing is that it is free. You know, you don't have to pay a pharmacist to ask them questions. So definitely utilize your pharmacist. It's a wonderful resource for information and knowledge. Number three reason is diet. You know, certain foods make you gain weight or retain sodium, all of which lead to eventually maintaining an elevated blood pressure. So we want to watch, our, we want to watch what we're putting into our bodies. You know, 
foods high in sodium include processed foods such as lunch meats, sausage, bacon, you know, canned soups, deli meats, and some snack foods like pretzels, popcorns, peanuts, chips, you know, all those things tend to be very high in sodium. I've already explained how sodium leads to an elevated blood pressure. What we rather should be eating are foods that are high in potassium. It is very well documented that potassium in adequate amounts definitely help to regulate your blood pressure. So we should be concentrating on foods high in potassium such as, you know, bananas, vegetables such as potatoes, spinach, tomatoes, broccoli, soybeans, and nuts. These are high in potassium and in the long run, they will help to bring your blood pressure down. The fourth reason is what I call lifestyle factors. How active are you? Do you smoke? Are you overweight? If any of these apply to you and you still and you have elevated blood pressure, it's about time we started looking and going back to the drawing board and seeing how we can change some of these things. If you smoke, plan and work towards quitting the smoking because smoking is definitely a risk factor for elevated blood pressure. Well, I cannot say enough about being inactive. You need a little bit of exercise. Even 30 minutes a day, three times a week will do wonders for your blood pressure. You'll be amazed. And also if you're overweight, of course, doing the exercise and also talking about the diet issues that we talked about earlier on, they would all help to get you to an uh, optimal weight, which will be good and which will eventually lead to your blood pressure dropping. The fifth reason is what we refer to as white coat hypertension. So it may well be that your seemingly constantly elevated blood pressure may not necessarily be elevated, but may only be elevated when you are in the doctor's office. You know, it's called white coat hypertension because traditionally medical professionals wear white coats or white overalls. And this phenomenon can only be combated if you are also taking independent readings, that is readings outside of your doctor's office. I would also highly recommend that if you can get your own blood pressure cuff at home, and I'll put a link in the description as to some that I recommend, you can get your cuff at home and you check your blood pressure independent of what a doctor is checking. And best practices to check your blood pressure is that you need to sit down, relax for about five minutes or so, let the body calm down before you take that reading. Now, if you put all these measures in place, you're taking your medications, you're doing all these things, you're active, and your blood pressure is still not responding to medication, it may be time for you to ask your doctor to refer you to a hypertension specialist. There are actually specialists who are recognized by the American Hypertension Society. Yes, there is a society like that where we have you know, very knowledgeable doctors whose sole aim is to help people manage resistant hypertension. It may be time to talk to a specialist because like I gave you the case scenario of the gentleman that I talked about whose information I've linked in the description. Yes, eventually they got to lower his blood pressure, but not until he had developed stage three kidney disease for all the years of elevated blood pressure. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, share it with somebody else who may also find it useful. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Catch you on the next video. Stay blessed.